I'm talking about Lufthansa, yeah, and I'm talking about packaging and Copenhagen. And you will see it nicely fits together. People traditionally think about efficiency. They think they would protect the environment if they would destroy a little less. Please reduce your carbon footprint, reduce your packaging, reduce your waste, and reduce your water consumption. That's the same if I would tell you, please beat your child only five times instead of ten times, protect your child, your, or your boyfriend, whatever. And so it's, you're not protecting when you just destroy a little less. And so just to be less bad doesn't really help us so much because for being less bad, we are too many people on this planet. And so we try to be more efficient. So we think traditionally from cradle to grave. And I'm talking about thinking from cradle to cradle. Or in Bavarian, it's knödel to knödel. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, basically, so we think about how can... Because if you just minimize your carbon footprint a little bit, you're just reaching the opposite, because you only slow down the destruction. But the whole planet will be a graveyard from cradle to grave. So this is why it's about innovation, reinventing things. It's not about sustainability, because sustainability is bloody boring. Yeah. So if I ask you, how is your relationship with your boyfriend? But you say, sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm really sorry about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the minimum. And just to be honest, real innovation cannot be sustainable. Yeah. When, for example, my mother was uh, washing the clothes uh, from the laundry from the family of 11 children, in the river, when her, her parents finally could make it to buy a washing machine, it was not sustainable. She, she lost her job. Yeah. So sustainability is just traditional guilt management. Yeah. Uh, so it's like when you beat the shit out of your child, you feel terrible. Yeah. So, so you try to minimize things. So then we roll our eyes and say, what did we do to Master Earth? Yeah. Like Prince Charles or Wandana Shiva. But there is no Master Earth. Yeah. I'm a chemist and I can tell you Yeah. I don't have a sense of humor, but a sense of tumor. And I can tell you the most toxic chemicals and the strongest carcinogens are still natural chemicals. Nature needs cancer to adjust the gene pool. So yeah, if this would be your mother, would she give you cancer to her child? Would she poison the child? Our natural lifetime expectation is 30 years. But we can learn from nature, because uh, I'm analyzing breast milk for many years, and I find no sample Which, where you could sell breast milk, human milk, as drinking milk. It exceeds uh, legal uh, levels for several hundred times for some parameters. Yeah. So it's, it's still, that if you have some doubts, it's still better to breastfeed your baby than any Nestle milk powder, because, for example, the mother can detoxify herself. Yeah. So with one baby, you lose one third of your pollutants, so do so. Yeah. So for men, there's nothing like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but as, on the other side, it's just to be scientifically accurate, for the first six months, breastfeeding is still more healthy because the liver of the baby doesn't function. So it doesn't get metabolized, so it's still he healthier, but not longer than maximum nine months, since this is really chemical harassment. Yeah. So <laughs> we can do something. The baby takes about 6,500 diapers. You can reduce it by 20%. This is packaging. 20% of Munich's... Uh, Waste are diapers, yeah. and there's some future in it because the volume of adult diapers is already bigger than of baby diapers. Yeah. So Nietzsche would say, "Life happens just between two diaper faces." Yeah. So, and and but you look, we could really do something if we, for example, if we, we would never give up wearing diapers, we would not have a wastewater problem. So we could do something. So. We can reduce this. We talked about the plastic waste in the oceans. We have 7 million tons of plastic going into the oceans every year. We can reduce it by 10%. Isn't it great? Minimize it by 20%. Yeah. There are areas in the northern Pacific where the plastic concentration is 40 times bigger than the plankton concentration. There are more seals and whales and turtles being killed by plastic than by anything else. You can reduce it, avoid it, but what do you really do? You can do something. Look, this theater is a place for the Munich Chicaria. Yeah. So if you really want to do something positively, eat oysters. Because I can show you in each oyster there are at least 1,500 pieces of plastics. Yeah. <laughs> so when you want to do circular economy, eat oysters. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to do recycling, that's ideal. And, and if, you drink, if you drink champagne, you can minimize your carbon footprint far more than if you drink Prosecco. Prosecco has much bigger bubbles, so if you drink champagne, you can reduce your carbon footprint by three times. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. And, so, 
Uh, you can do a lot of these things. Like if you cut your hair shorter, it saves 5,000 liters of, uh, of water easily. It's about 9,000 if you have long hair. Yeah? So if you are bold, you do something for the environment. Yeah? Uh, for example, we have such a perverse agriculture where it takes 10 calories for making one calorie of food, yeah? which has to do with packaging and stuff as well with that. So if you take, uh, if you take uh, the elevator, yeah, it only takes two calories. So when you take the elevator, you can minimize your carbon footprint by five times. Yeah. <laughs> so when you want to protect the environment in the logic of being less bad, you yeah, always take the elevator. And by the way, when you die a little earlier, you can minimize your carbon footprint even more. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we talked about Copenhagen. These idiots. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> or think about Munich. Munich wants to be climate neutral. These idiots. Did you ever see a climate neutral tree? So with all our brain, we want to be more stupid than a tree. Did you ever see a carbon neutral tree? Yeah. So a tree is always carbon positive. A tree is always climate positive. So with all our brain, we want to be more stupid than a tree. So this is amazing. Yeah. So the second perspective, you think, what idiots? Yeah. Because, because what you do with that, you say, hey, it's better you're not here. Yeah. It's better you're not born. And when people have fear, and we see this in Israel with Ms. Netanyahu, yeah, when people have fear, they become idiots, yeah? because, because they try to become greedy, because and under fear, you grab all the stuff. Before you eat my lunch, I better pick it. When people feel safe, when they feel accepted, they're always generous and friendly. So we don't need to reduce, avoid, minimize. We can celebrate abundance, because we have abundance of energy. So nature is not our mother. Yeah? We are no mother fuckers, because there's no mother nature. Yeah? So, we, it, nature is our teacher, yeah? nature is our partner, but not our mother. Because when we say, Mother Earth, we make ourselves so small. Our natural lifetime expectation is 30 years. When we get older, it's not because of Mother Earth, it's because of us. Because of us as scientists. So, but this is where we are. We try to be less bad and minimize. How do you get more of the same resource? Yeah? <laughs> when I was a child, a cow was producing 4,000 liters of milk. Yeah? Today, in the Netherlands, I'm teaching at Erasmus School in Rotterdam. Yeah, a cow is producing 12,000 liters of milk. Do you really want to squeeze another 1,000 liters of this poor cow? Yeah? <laughs> want to really have an, another pair of legs for this poor monster sheep? Yeah? <laughs> is this really? But these are all these consulting idiots who really try to make things more efficient. Just to be honest, East Germany has been protecting the environment so much better than West Germany, except for local hotspots, by inefficiency. Yeah. So, if you, if you do something wrong, don't make it perfect, otherwise it's perfectly wrong, yeah? So, but this is, this is where we are. Yeah. See, this is where we are, we said the greenest house is the one that never gets built. Yeah. So, we, what we're doing, we are sealing our houses yeah, and to save energy, but the indoor air quality in the house in Bavaria is about three to eight times worse than outside urban air here in the city. Yeah. Now we seal the building. 40% yeah. of our houses have mold in Dutch is schimmel. Yeah. So, because, and so we get asthma for children. So instead of first saying what is the right thing, yeah, we are optimizing wrong things. Yeah. So why don't we say first thing we want to have healthy air in a building and then we do energy saving. We do see the other, other way around. You only get tax credits when you can prove that your building is sealed. We, our stuff which we have is not designed for biological or technical systems at all. It's pure toxic waste. When you buy a little parking ticket, yeah, you find a dozen of chemicals immediately which go, go through your bloodstream into your, uh, yeah, in your biological system, which we find them in all the thermal paper yeah, in, in, your, in breast milk. Is it, the euro is never designed for skin contact. Don't tell the British about it. But because <laughs> then they know it's toxic. If you take a euro, it braids 200 times more nickel than it's legal for any other product. Yeah? Because it it's just abrades the nickel from it. And so about 15% of the women suffer from nickel allergies. Yeah? Because they just get the coin separation and they just put it in their neck when they're sweating. Yeah, and it's really amazing because it destroys your whole immune system with that, with this nickel allergy. So it makes sense to reduce the use of oil and gas, that there's no misunderstanding. But where's our positive footprint? When you're in Sweden, your, your footprint destroys the soil. This is why you try to save, you re reduce your footprint. You can do something. For example, we would not have this plane crash with Lufthansa 
Yeah? If, for example, you would first go to the toilet before you enter an airplane. Yeah? Because if everybody takes a, ent empties his digestion system, it saves five tons of kerosene. Yeah? So it's, it's easier to fly the airplane with it. Yeah? So if you fly from, from Munich to New York, yeah? and because most of the people from Munich I see flying into New York are going to, to do shopping there. Yeah? So if you would fly naked, yeah, like we heard from the speaker before, yeah, it would save another two tons of kerosene. So you really can do something. Yeah. So why, why don't we look for positive impacts? When you are in Sweden, your footprint is a disaster. That's where you try to minimize your footprint. We can do something. Why, why don't you make high heels for men? Then you can reduce your footprint. Yeah, but does it make sense? Yeah, or if people now are insulating their houses, if you would just make a legislation, that, like these two gentlemen here in front, yeah, they show you how the future can look like. When you wear a tie, get a little strangled for women, you can reduce the room temperature by two degrees Celsius, yeah, <laughs> if you feel much warmer. So it's far more than insulating all the buildings with styrofoam in that. Yeah, so. so we need to reinvent everything what we see around us. Don't make things less bad. So we make, for example, when your plane is crashing, edible fabrics. So because when, when you sit in such a chair, the pieces you cut off are so toxic that they need to go into hazardous waste incineration. So and we think it's good for the environment. But you sit next to a beautiful lady, you get a little nervous, you actually eat up this fabric. So when your airplane is crashing, people have a lack of fiber uptake anyways. You can always eat, at least before you try to swim, some fabric. So but what it means? We can now use 40 years of playment shame for innovation. You can make these fabrics in Switzerland, not only for the first class. They don't compete with slave labor work from Asia anymore because they have much better products. So I'm not talking about green, not sustainable. I'm talking about innovation, about quality. A product which becomes waste is just a stupid product. So we don't need ethics for that because not only in Germany, we forget ethical behavior immediately under stress. Yeah. So if you make it an ethical thing, it's never there when you need it. Where's the highest rate of speeding in Rotterdam? Yeah, reckless driving. People are as an average twice as fast as it's allowed normally. It is in front of kindergartens. Yeah. So don't make it an ethical thing. Yeah. So people talk, oh, we need to think about the future generation. <laughs> Did you ever see one future generation thinking about you? <laughs> no. If they don't think about you, why should you think about them? It's enough if you want to be... If, 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 if you want to be not stupid, it's enough. When you're making waste, yeah, when you're making plastic for the oceans, when you make stupid packaging, you're just an idiot. That's enough. So a little self-esteem is enough. You don't need ethics for that. Yeah. So we can make materials when they get consumed, like shoe soles, like brake pads, to go in biological systems. When you make them technical, yeah, when you don't consume a washing machine, you don't consume a TV set. So everything that needs to get consumed chemically, biologically, change needs to go to biological systems. So, for example, now a, a tire lasts much longer, yeah, for, but you think it's good for the environment because they last twice as long than they did before. But the particulates from the tire now are much smaller. About 20% of the Munich people yeah, around the, the ring here are suffering from a permanent inflammation of their lung by inhaling tire dust because there are 600 chemicals being in there because we made the wrong things efficient. Yeah. Instead of first saying what is healthy air, we optimize existing things. So, so we have two different cycles, the stuff which gets consumed, like tires, like brake pads. Brake pads says, for example, for Volkswagen, this brake pad is free of asbestos. Yeah. The replacement is antimony sulfate, which is a much stronger carcinogen. <laughs> so if I invite you for dinner and said it's free of chicken, it doesn't really help you. It's the same with thought or whatever. Yeah, so, so now we have windows on the market where you just sell the use of the window. So we can't make an energy-saving window without toxic stuff. But it's only toxic when it goes to the biological system. So let's reinvent stuff. Everything that is just a service can go in biological systems. We can now use the walls of buildings. This is 80 times more productive than if we grow corn. Yeah, when you grow corn, you lose between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare. 20% yeah. of agricultural land in Bavaria, Bavaria is used to grow corn. This is perverse because two-thirds of all the carbon is in soil, not in oil. Yeah. So we destroy the soil, we lose 5,000 times more soil than we make. So this is ecologism. We keep people busy instead of doing something. Like socialism was never social, ecologism doesn't help us. So if you take algae, yeah, the protein is much more healthy than beef. If you would go in the food chain yeah, for mushrooms, for bacteria, for algae, 
for insects, we could easily feed 30 billion people on this planet. So we can look at the child and say, how nice that you're here. Welcome to the planet. Taking the diapers. Yeah. So if you change the super absorbers yeah, in diapers, right now they are toxic. They need to go to incineration because they're not designed. If you change the super absorbers, that you can use them as a plant substrate yeah, to keep the water in the soil. And if you remove the plastic or make it biodegradable, then you could, with one baby, grow 150 trees in Israel. Because, or in Tunisia, or wherever you want to do in Northern Africa. Because it's raining yeah, more than in Munich, but in Munich it's raining more often. So if you capture the water yeah, there, you could grow with one baby 150 trees. So the baby could be just by the diapers carbon positive from the beginning. So why should we look at the child and say, be 20% less bad? Yeah. No, you can say, welcome to the planet. This is why it's about innovation, it's about quality, and we need to reinvent things. This is why I'm on one side teaching like crazy in all these different universities, because I need scientists, engineers, designers, all different people together. But on the other side, I need to develop these things with companies to make them differently. Because otherwise we are too slow, because at universities, they only get paid for problems. So as long as problems are there, we get paid. So we keep problems alive. But let's fix it. Let's really reinvent everything on this planet. And then we can look at the child and say, welcome to this planet. So welcome that you're here. Thank you.